Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here. I'm wearing the same shirt as I did in the last video. That's because I decided to turn the camera back on and go ahead and do two episodes at the same time because there was a subject I was thinking about that I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. I don't want to prepare too much. That's the whole spirit of the vlog. Um, so we're going to talk um, particularly about uh, motion picture influences on photography and I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, a couple things. First of all, we're going to do a Dallas meetup. Um, so if you live in Dallas, you live in the area, come to our meetup. It's going to be August 11th, 2012. It's a Saturday. It's next Saturday, a week from tomorrow. Uh, if you're watching it, well, you wouldn't see it tomorrow. You'd see it today, but anyway, I'm beside the point. Um, check it out. Come find us. Uh, we're going to be at the Farmer's Market downtown in downtown Dallas. That was redundant. And uh, anyway, it's going to be fun. We're going to meet up at 10 in the morning. Um, if you're going to be late or something and you still want to make it, follow us on Twitter and uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Ted Forbes or if you go to twitter.com slash Ted Forbes, you can follow me there and hook it up to your cell phone and we can text and uh, it's a good way to keep up. That seemed to work pretty well with the meetups in the past. It's pretty cool to be doing this meetup because I've done two meetups in London. I've done one in New York and I, for whatever reason, you know, completely leave my hometown to do them and I've never done one here. So we're going to go ahead and do a Dallas meetup. So it might be fun. So um, you can also look for details on the uh, show website, on my website, which is theartofphotography.tv. And uh, check it out. I'll put a, um, a link below as well so you can, you can see from there. Uh, but I want to talk to you briefly um, about films. And again, this is different than my regular podcast because I don't prepare as much. So pardon me if I stutter or, or, or forget names or you know, things like that. Uh, but anyway, of that nature, um, you know, a couple of you, we've had discussions uh, you know, via comments and via email. And I've had several comments people talking about... If you're going to be inspired by photographers, maybe other art forms you're inspired by as well. Well, I, you know, as you know, I work for an art museum, and I'm inspired by a lot of art. Um, and I'm, I happen to be a photographer, and that's what kind of speaks to me the most. Uh, but I'm inspired by sculptors, by painters, by all kinds of things. An off-ball thing that I thought might be kind of fun to talk about because I've been particularly attached to two films recently would be filmmakers. And if you watch my podcast, if you follow me at all for any length of time you know that I tend to hype uh, the whole idea of storytelling and this whole notion of being able to tell a story through images, which is essentially what a uh, photographer's duty is. And if you're trying to communicate something or tell a story or set a mood, um, I think something that's very similar but different at the same time would be uh, motion picture directors. And there's two films in particular that I'm going to talk about. And the first one is a movie that came out in the late 70s, 79, I believe, uh, called Apocalypse Now, uh, which was... Um, Francis Ford Coppola's epic uh, that basically was a story taking place during the Vietnam War. It's kind of a heavy movie. Uh, it's a little dark. Um, I think by today's standards, it's not very scary or, you know, it's intense though. And the things that make it intense are just, you know, classic film stuff that really speak to me. Uh, the first thing I would say about this film, <clears throat> and the reason I wanted to start watching it again is I'd never seen the redo version. So there are two versions of Apocalypse Now, and you can get them both on Netflix actually, or iTunes. Uh, Netflix is the subscription, iTunes you can pay per film. Uh, but the original version, and then there's the redo version. Uh, the redo version, and I haven't compared them because it's been a long time since I've seen the original, but the redo version may have been remastered because it is absolutely beautiful to look at. The color is just stunning. Um, the composition, the cinematography, uh, the photography direction is just amazing. So I think on one level it's very inspiring because there's not a dud shot in the entire film. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. You can take any frame and it makes a wonderful picture. Now, the differences in storytelling with somebody who, like Ford Coppola who does, uh, you know, motion pictures as opposed to somebody who's doing stills like you or me and with photography, uh, you know, we have the still camera and they've got a crew and a motion picture and the whole thing to do. Um, but it is interesting because how they tell stories and set mood, and I think because the story of the photography relates to it. So it is two different mediums, and it, it is kind of fun to start thinking about, okay, being influenced by this, how could I say this in one image? Um, which is, you know, I, I think fairly, uh, you know, an interesting thing to think about. Um, the interesting thing, too, is it's kind of two movies in one. Um, if you watch Apocalypse Now, um, it, first of all, it's some amazing actors who deliver some of their best performances. Um, maybe not the best, well, maybe. Uh, Marlon Brando is incredible in it. He's the, the villain, so to speak. Uh, and Martin Sheen plays the soldier who's sent up to Cambodia to capture um, Brando's character, who's gone insane and is... Uh, 
you know, leading a community in a village, and, and it, it's, it's amazing. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, from an acting standpoint, the music's incredible, the, uh, the cinematography is just wonderful. There's a documentary movie that you should watch as well called uh, Heart of Darkness, Hearts of Darkness, sorry. And Hearts of Darkness deals with the making of the film. So it was actually shot on location. So you get to see what Ford Coppola went through. I believe Sheen had a heart attack halfway through the filming and had to leave. Uh, Brando was a complete pain in the tush to work with. And so it's really interesting to see some of these things and, and like the location and some of the aspects of that. And anyway, extremely inspiring. Um, and it had a sister movie that's this documentary. The second movie that I would recommend uh, is one from one of my favorite movie directors, artists of all time, which is the wonderful German director Werner Herzog. And if you're not familiar with Werner Herzog's work, um, get familiar really quick. It is so amazing and intense. Um, throughout the 70s into probably some of the 80s, well definitely through the 80s, uh, Werner Herzog did um, these epic films of uh, just these wonderful stories. They mostly are in German, but you can get them subtitled if you don't speak German. Um, and they're just really wonderful. Again, just the most beautiful cinematography. And there's something about the way Werner Herzog shoots everything that is just, I mean, you, it just makes you want to sit down. It's so beautiful and awesome to look at. Uh, he has an incredible way of telling stories, particularly very involved epic tales. Um, he's most well known for the movies that he uh, collaborated with, um, the actor who was the lead actor in all of his films, Klaus Kinski. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've ever seen Nosferatu, the, you know, the Dracula film he did was, was probably one of the, the most well-known, I think, in the U.S. Uh, but Aguirre is wonderful. The one I'm recommending to you guys is a movie called uh, Fitzcarraldo, which is the story basically of a, of a guy who has, he, he, he's a little mental as well, um, who has this dream, it, it, which is funny because it relates to Apocalypse Now because there's also a boat involved, uh, but he has this dream of, of bringing an opera house to Peru and he is in the rubber trade and it's an intense film. It also has a sister movie called Burden of Dreams, which is a behind the scenes and you get to see kind of how that movie was put together and how intense uh, Kinski could be as an actor. And, and on a very different, less jerk level, um, Werner Herzog is very intense too. He's more of this really warm, friendly guy, but you can tell he's so driven to do what he wants to do. And they're a really interesting pairing. And again, Burden of Dreams is the making of this. There's actually, uh, without ruining too much of it, um, there is a scene in which they have to take a steamboat and literally with tribal natives carry this boat over a, over a mountain. And uh, it was actually filmed that way. Anyway, go see these, they're wonderful, rent them. Um, they're really kind of, the second one, the Werner Herzog movies, any of them are great. They're hard to find on Netflix, they're hard to find on iTunes. I don't, it's a licensing thing. Um, so I ended up having to get the DVDs from Blockbuster. Um, so welcome to last century, but, uh, but they're amazing. Uh, you can find clips of them on YouTube. <laughs> uh, go check it out. Um, anyway, so there's basically four movies wrapped up into two that uh, two sets that, that I highly recommend you check out uh, mainly to see from a cinematography standpoint but also to see from a storytelling standpoint and and to let that kind of be an influence to you and what you're trying to do as a photographer because I think finding outside influences that influence photography is whatever that is be it film be it painting be it you know um, that's very important and it makes you a deeper person uh, more mindful and a better photographer all at the same time so anyway uh also it's worth noting because i'm just such a big fan Werner herzog it still makes films uh, he's moving away from doing these kind of epic stories to doing stuff that's more documentary based and his documentaries are extremely interesting too um, still an incredible director and it's really interesting because i think with I'm completely off topic now, just so you know. But completely, uh, with, with like bands, musicians, filmmakers, uh, I think even photographers, it's like it's almost like everybody kind of has this period of growth where, you know, especially people who have had really well-known careers, where they're doing their best work. And it seems to kind of plateau out after the early hungry period where their best peak is, and then it dips off. Werner Herzog is a is an individual who avoids that uh, completely. He's reinvented himself several times, particularly with this documentary thing that he's doing now, which is amazing because he stays new, he stays current, he stays fresh, and it stays interesting. So anyway, I think that's worth noting because uh, you know when you think about your own photography and your own career, whatever that is, if you end up being a commercial photographer or if you just shoot your own pictures, um, those are two things to think about. Anyway, once again, this has been the Art of Photography Vlog Edition. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.